Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants, and I have with me Sandy Kreisberg, the HBS guru. guru, indeed. And we have another episode of our Handicapping Your Elite MBA Odds. And we have today a candidate who is uh, Asian, male. Great story. Twenty story. Yep, 24 years old. He is working as an auditor in a big four firm. He uh, has an... He uh, said one of the, <laughs> the better big four firm, John. So we're not going to... We're not going to identify what the better of the big four firm is, but we'll let maybe you guess. people in the comments could <laughs> take a vote on that. Yeah. And uh, he went to Babson uh, for an undergraduate degree in finance and accounting, uh, got out of Babson for 3.44, has a 730 GMAT, uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's real simple. He's an immigrant. He went to Babson. He's got a 344, a 730. He's been an auditor for two years. Yeah, he right. wants to... And he's very interested in, passionate about volunteering for nonprofits. He's done gigs in um, various places. He's traveled to do nonprofit engagements. Right. And, and he wants to go to Harvard, MIT Sloan, Tuck, or Yale. Right. And what, he's got some... Very clear goals. What does he say his goals are? Uh, I think he wants to become a management consultant. He wants to transition no. to, into MBB, McKinsey, Bain, BC, uh, or BCG, yes. with a long-term goal uh, to use his skill sets to make an impact on the not-for-profit scene as it relates to education and family security. And he's done some of that already. He's volunteered in Belize, teaching financial literacy, and in right. China teaching English and also around his town. Right. Other interesting thing that you uh, alluded to before is his narrative. He came to America with his family and was essentially homeless, living in one motel after another, uh, which also makes him sort of an interesting, uh, I think, character. Sure, yeah. You'd be willing to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. And first-gen uh, college student as well. First-gen... Um, and he asks whether he would be better off applying as an American citizen or as a green card holder. Makes no difference. I don't, not in his case, because if, if he got the American citizenship, he would not then flip into being a minority. Yeah. Although he, he is considered an international student with a Malaysian passport. Correct. Right. But if he got American citizenship, for instance, if this guy had a Hispanic surname, I would advise him to apply as an American citizen because then he's a technical underrepresented minority. We say this a lot, but it's worth repeating. Underrepresented minority is a legal term. Mm. It means you are one, an American citizen, and beyond that, two, African American, Hispanic surname, or Native American. Right. Did I leave anything out? Yeah. I think that covers it. Yeah. <laughs> And he is actually uh, part Chinese, part Portuguese, part Indian, which is quite a mix, but largely Chinese. Yeah. All right. So, so wh how do you how do you assess the odds on a guy like this? There's a lot of interesting things, but for the hard-hearted and hard-headed admissions officer, what you have for the most part is a guy with a three-four from Babson, a seven-twenty. 7.30 GMAT in two years as an auditor. That does not lead to HBS, Sloan, Tuck, or Yale. So then the question becomes, well, how much is the other stuff going to pull, pull him in? Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it could be hard. My, my advice to this guy, given that he's so young. He's 24. He's right. 24. He's working as an auditor for the better of the big four companies. He's interested in nonprofits. Being an auditor gives you real skills. My advice to this guy is not to apply to business school. Apply to the Gates Foundation or some other selective NGO mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as an auditor mm -hmm. or the Red Cross or whatever. Teach for, teach for America. Be an auditor for them. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. That would make him a more powerful candidate in two years. And then with that, well, for instance, if this guy showed up two years later and said, it's me again, except for the past two years, I've been an auditor at the Gates Foundation, I'd say, you've, you've got a chance at these schools. Right. I mean, the other route is he gets a promotion into the consulting arm of the big four that's uh, a little that he's bit working for, right? Yeah, that's a and, little and that would be uh, more helpful to him as well. Right. Uh, the fact is, you're on the young side, you could use a little more seasoning and work experience, and if you can leverage the two years and there's a lot of silver here. Else, you know, it'd be good. Babson is yeah. not a feeder school, right? To uh, Harvard, Sloan, etc. Even though, you know, you're better off being a kind of immigrant Chinese immigrant adversity story. You're better off than a white male guy from. Wellesley, which is where Babson is, I think. You're better off going to, with this guy's background than just being a white male. Oh, you mean Babson. Wesleyan, right? No, Babson. Oh, no, as Babson, opposed to Wellesley. <laughs> Babson College is in the western suburbs of Massachusetts. Yeah. So what I meant is Babson's not a feeder school to the top business schools. But business schools would wink at a Babson college graduate with an adversity story. That's what I meant. Ah, right. Okay, odds at Harvard. What do you think? In its current state, you're at 20%. It's mm -hmm. not getting in. Same at MIT Sloan? Yeah. Yeah, because they accept uh, fewer numbers of people, obviously. Uh, and then we have Yale and we have Tuck. Yeah. Uh, also tough yeah, schools but, but to get uh, into, it's really. It's going to be hard. Yeah. So they're probably I might, I might 25%? Bite my, I might, yeah, 30%. I might bite my tongue if the volunteering is significant, mm -hmm. if it could make a good story. Mm. But man, Babson, Auditor, there's just a lot of silver here. Yeah. So he's going to have to lay on the adversity story to even have a oh, realistic for sure. shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without that, he's no place. And, and write about that in really compelling ways. Uh, because after all, you're first gen, you did make it to a big four firm, which is not necessarily easy. Yeah, and he was, and what he's, he said, he's living in a motel, sure. Yeah, and he's got a good GMAT, 730 solid GMAT score, so it's not a question right. of your, your numbers, your 3.44, your GMAT is perfectly okay. Uh, you need a little more work experience, and you may need a little different work experience. An upgrade right. in the job is yeah. the best thing you could do. All right, there you go. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Sandy Kreisberg, the HBS guru. And we're wishing you success on the road to an MBA.